In this GIMP video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use GIMP to create this logo. Now, one thing I did want to point out is the logo that you see right now in the image is what it actually looks like. Uh, the video program that I used, uh, for whatever reason, didn't record it quite right. So the gradient looks pretty funny in the video. But I did want to point out that if you do this in GIMP, like I show you in the video, it's actually going to look like this, not like what you see in the video. Okay, in this quick video lesson, I'm going to show you how I made this logo. First things first, we're going to open up GIMP and uh, find ourselves an Android logo somewhere. And then you're going to click on the eyedropper tool and you're going to select this color green somewhere so that you have it for later. Um, actually, make sure that you click on this and click on this arrow button and add it to your palette. That way you can use it later. All right. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the Android logo from the background. Um, I do this a little differently than a lot of people. If you are a follower of my videos and such, you know that I'm an avid user of the layer masks. And uh, I think you'll have an understanding of why. Most people, a lot of people, would actually just do the background select and delete. Like, well, first they would add an alpha layer, alpha channel, and then they would delete like this. But the problem is it leaves this white <clears throat> around the edges, which obviously we don't want. So we'll go ahead and zoom back out. And I'll show you how I do it using layer masks to remove those without having to uh, do a lot of extra work. So we're going to right click and add a layer mask and make it a grayscale copy of the layer. Now if you don't know anything about layer masks there is a link in the description area below. Go ahead and click on that and check it out and get an understanding of how these work. It's a very powerful tool and I recommend you really make it a part of your um, GIMP routine. So now right click on the layer mask you created and click show layer mask. And what it's going to do is it's going to show you the layer mask instead of the actual image. Now in this case, it's our layer mask, like we initialized it to, is just a grayscale copy of the logo. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually click on Colors, Levels, and adjust the levels down until that logo is black, completely black like this. Now if you know anything about layer masks, you know that white is um, not transparent and black is transparent. So in this case this is actually going to literally do the opposite of what we want. If I right click on this layer and uncheck show layer mask you'll see that everything but the uh, Android logo is visible and that's completely not what we want in this case. Maybe in another case but not in this case. So I'm gonna go ahead and show the layer mask again to see what, show you what I mean. See the black is invisible and the white is. So we're gonna actually click colors invert and that'll make the background black and the foreground white, which is exactly what we want. So I'll uncheck the show layer mask and you'll see that the uh, Android logo is now pretty well selected. If I zoom in, you'll see there's still some lighter pixels around the edge and we don't, we still don't want that. So we're gonna finish the job here. Now, since this is a single color image, it's really easy to uh, work with this with layer masks because really we don't need any of this white stuff in the background because our edge is already defined by the layer mask. So if we just select all and hit uh, the delete key, it's actually going to turn our layer completely white. And then we'll just get our bucket tool, shift B, and just uh, fill that whole layer with green. And if I disable the layer mask, you'll see it's just green, but the layer mask is defining my edge so it's creating the logo for me. So now, if you zoom in, there's no white on the image, so there's no white to be found anywhere because, again, there's just no white in that background because it's all green. So that'll give us the edge that we want. So now that we have created and isolated the um, Android logo from the background, what we're going to do next is we're going to actually uh, create the rest of the image. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to click new layer. Uh, we'll just leave all the settings at their default settings and hit OK. Now I'm actually going to move this below the uh, Android icon. 
and I'm going to reset my colors to black and white and set my background, my white, to a, a, just a slightly lighter black and hit OK. I'm going to click on my gradient and go over to radial. Make sure your gradient is set to foreground, background, RGB and just drag a gradient out and see how that looks. Okay, that's <laughs> actually that's backwards. I wanted it the other way around. So I'm going to edit, undo, and I'm going to flip this and just repeat that process. And you'll see I've got a really nice gradient there on the background. Now I'm going to rotate my Android logo around to make his head in that D shape like it is in the logo. So I'm just going to click on my rotate tool, click on the Android logo, make sure I'm actually rotating the logo. Yeah, I am. Okay. And uh, just rotate him 90 degrees. Rotate. Okay. And then you just get your move tool and drag him over to the side like so. Gotta have him sticking his head out like so, like that. And as a matter of fact, let's pull him in a little further because we're going to actually crop this later. And you want to make sure that your gradient's on center. And now we're going to, if you remember back at the original logo, this part right here, I made it a slightly darker color. That way the uh, head sticks out and it's more apparent that it's a D. So I'll show you how to do that. All you have to do is duplicate the Android and the lower one make its opacity lower it doesn't really matter what it's at right now just drag it down lower so you can tell a difference and then on the top one um, grab your rectangular marquee or what is a rectangular select yeah rectangle select tool and just drag around to make a selection zoom in and tweak it just so that you're only selecting the body and not the head Make sure you're editing the top layer's layer mask and that you're filling in the color black. Grab your bucket fill tool and make sure it says fill whole selection and fill the selection. Now what happened here is our lower, since we added that layer mask, the only part that's visible in the top layer is the head. The bottom layer though still has the body as semi-transparent so it looks like it's just darker and it's using the background so it's still taking advantage of the gradient and the effects underneath of it to still give it a, a decent look so from there we're going to go ahead and create another new layer oh correction I'm sorry you're actually just going to click on the text tool and just click and then make a letter uh, S capital S uh, you're going to want to make it that same color green as we made earlier by clicking on the color in the tools options and selecting green, hitting OK, and then hitting close. You zoom in, you can see our S is the same color as the Android. And go ahead and just scale it up by adjusting the size. Click on your move tool. And I actually moved mine like this originally just to give myself a reference to how tall it is compared to the head. Because you know the body is the same width as the head, so as long as the body is the same height as my letter S, then it's going to be the same height as the letter the uh, letter D. So I select my text tool and I double click on the layer to edit this again. We're going to go ahead and scale it up until it's a size that works. See that's pretty good. So now we're going to grab our move tool again, and this time holding Control. It'll actually snap to uh, 45s and 90s. And since we've already got it lined up here, we know it'll stay lined up if we hold in control and just drag it out. So right there's our letter S. So there's the logo minus the top and bottom part and the fact that it needs cropped. So we're just going to go ahead and click on the crop tool right here. And we're going to check the fixed aspect ratio. And we're going to set this at 1 to 1 because we want this to be square. So set it to 1 to 1 and then just start dragging. And then just slide it over somewhere on center, something that looks fairly nice. 
and then when you're ready, you hit enter. Now you have your little Android logo sticking out with the letter S. Now we just have to add the text to the top and bottom. So you click on your text tool, click, how did they spell that? Yeah, decoded. Okay, D E K O D E D. That was. Sometimes the text tool messes up a little bit like this. There it is. D E K O D E D. Decoded. We're going to scale that down to a more feasible size. And we're going to also make that the same color, green. Hit OK. Close. And we're going to move this on center. My memory. Yeah, you can actually click on this alignment tool if you want, and you can actually align the text on center. So you select it to relative to image and hit center, and it'll actually put it on center if you want it to be. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe that only works with certain things. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, truth be told, I don't really use that alignment tool very much. Usually I just create a new guide at 50%, but since this is just a quick tutorial, I decided against it. So we're going to duplicate this layer, grab the move tool, drag it down, holding control to make sure they stay lined up, and then double click on this, the duplicated layer, and just type in software. Now Actually, what I recommend doing instead is whenever you do this font, put it on center, the alignment, set it to center like so. That way, whenever you type in anything new, it stays on center. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If you duplicate this layer now and you move this down, you'll notice that whenever I change the text, it stays. And also, you can actually drag this out to the edges and that'll also center it and actually I'm going to do the same thing with this one too one of the easiest ways to center something on, text on a canvas is just make the box that size that way it dynamically changes as you add and remove text so um, that's it hope you guys enjoyed it